Hey guys, Jamie and Jeremy, and welcome to the dirt. Today we are going to talk about prepping. Are preppers crazy? We'll let you know. So what is the dirt? The dirt is where we tell you a little bit about us, why we think what we think, why we do what we do. And today we are going to talk uh, about something that I wanted to cover for a long time, which is about preppers and basically the whole craziness that surrounds prepping and, and the spectrum of prepping and uh, basically where we fall on that spectrum. So uh, we have a list of questions from you guys that we've been collecting over the last couple weeks and we're going to get to it. Yeah, this is going to be one of the, this is going to be our first uh, foray into YouTube's new premiere feature. So if you're watching this with us, I think it's going to be 8 a.m. Sunday. Uh, we're we're going to be on there live chatting with you as we all watch this video together. Just to check it out, try it, see how it works. Seems like a cool idea, so why not? Um, all right, so last time when we were talking about uh, questions about the house on the last dirt, Jamie was asking most of the questions and it seemed like I was answering most of the questions. So this time I'm going to ask... You're going to ask the questions. I'm going to ask then. questions and she's going to answer them. I don't know if I can do it all in one take though because I have to think <laughs> about things. Yeah, all right. But so. I will say that um, I think this is going to be somewhat of a controversial topic uh, just because, you know, there is a wide spectrum of preppers out there just like there is with any topic. You talk about politics, you talk about religion, you talk about exercise. There's going to be someone that uh, doesn't believe in it, doesn't do it, all the way up to the extremists uh, on the other end. And people who are extremists look at us and say, you know, you guys just aren't doing enough and so we get a lot of crit criticism from, from people yeah. like that. And then you have people who have absolutely no clue whatsoever uh, about anything prepping related and they look at us and they're like well we, we can't even imagine doing what you're doing and you guys are crazy so i think we kind of get it from both ends but that kind of leads into the first question yeah we we do what works for us uh for our own reasons and we, with common sense and we're, we try not to get too crazy about it but yeah and, <clears throat> and also i just wanted to like premise this whole conversation with the fact that we are not trying to convert anybody into <laughs> prepping. We are also not trying to come across as the experts on prepping. We are just sharing what we do. And for those of you guys that are maybe uh, um, interested in learning about this kind of stuff or just you know learning about us and our stance and what we do, then you might find this of interest or of value to you. Yes. Okay, so we've gotten a lot of questions about prepping in previous videos in the comments, and so we've ca gathered a together a bunch of them, and Jamie is going to answer them today. And okay. first one is, what events are you prepping for? Uh, we covered this in a video uh, about probably about two years ago in why we prep, <clears throat> but basically we are prepping for um, one natural disasters, natural events. So hurricanes that come through. You know, we have a lot of power outages in the area. Those are things that we are prepping for. Uh, blizzards or snowstorms, ice storms, stuff like that that comes through, take out your power, maybe leave you isolated for a while. Those are events that we are prepping for. Um, also, job loss. That's a huge one. Uh, these are all events that have personally occurred to us, and so they are events that we are trying to head off from any of. Uh, future events that might happen, or where it might happen again. <laughs> Job loss is another one. Uh, and another one would be an economic collapse. Um, I believe in the history of America, and somebody else can correct me because I'm not that on top of it, but I believe every seven years we have a recession, some greater than others. Our last one was quite a while ago, back in 2008, and we are overdue for another major recession. Um, and, you know, it could be a big doozy like the Great Depression, or it might, not, might just be one like the one in 2008, which was bad enough. Uh, we don't know, but that's another thing we're prepping for. And I think probably the biggest thing we are prepping for is old age. Um, I see a lot of people who are in their late 70s or 80s bagging groceries at the grocery store, can't uh, pay their medical bills, uh, they, they can't put food on the table for themselves, and they just have nobody to take care of them. Um, people who are unfortunately have to be put into nursing homes or who can't even afford to be put into nursing homes, which, are, which is a worse situation. Things like that we are going to try and head off at the past. That's the major things that we're prepping for. So not necessarily zombie apocalypse, you know, more everyday things. Yeah, more practical, common sense, everyday things. Okay, question number two, and this one's funny. Why do preppers live scared all the time, worrying about some SHTF event? How exhausting. 
Yeah, I, I've actually had this, I've seen this comment come up quite a bit about people who don't prep at all or who have a certain idea of what prepping is and they City think, folk. They, well, yeah, <laughs> they think that, um, you know, preppers walk around paranoid that, you know, it's going to be the end of the world as we know it kind of event or an SHTF situation that's happening all the time. And the only way I can explain it is it's completely the opposite. <clears throat> For those people that don't understand prepping, um, and, and prepping is a form of insurance. But what I think people who don't prep do that is similar is buy insurance. Let's just say you have uh, vehicle insurance, right? You buy insurance on your vehicle that in case you get into a car accident, you have that covered and you don't have to worry about coming out with a full payment to replace that vehicle. And so are you worried when you go out driving that you're always going to get into an accident? Well, no, if you have car insurance, you, you kind of have that security in the back of your mind that, you know, I got this kind of taken care of. Same thing with house insurance or f fire insurance or anything like that. You don't worry about it all the time because you have insurance. Prepping is a form of insurance. People who prep actually have a peace of mind uh, that people who don't prep don't have and I just think that they're oblivious to the to the events that could potentially occur to them. Yeah, um, I think uh, a lot of people when you say prepper if they're not familiar with what it is all they're familiar with is the reality TV shows where there's crazy people burying shipping containers and sides of mountains and I gotta be honest there are a lot of really extreme preppers out there I'm talking about the the voiceover guys on YouTube that put up you know, disaster photos and say yeah. how the world's going to end. And I'm not saying anything about those kinds of guys, but you're not doing anything to help the non-prepping world to get into prepping, which it would be to your benefit because if you are worried about an, an end of the world event, the more people that are prepped, the better. So scaring them off with these, these yeah. uh, scare tactic videos is not helping. Yeah. It's not as exciting as everybody seems to make it out to be. It's, it's just common sense. Yeah. <clears throat> Backup water resources, do you have them? And if not, do you have plans for backup water Absolutely. resources? Absolutely, yeah. Um, we talked about the seep spring, uh, not the most ideal way of getting our, our water, our potable water. Um, we are planning on putting in a deep well and we are planning on having backup ways of getting that water out. So we will have a, a, a pump, we will have reservoirs, uh, catchment systems. We talked about water catchment systems. This is not something that we can do all at once. It's something that we're going to have to slowly build up mm -hmm. um, to do. So, you know, you're not gonna see us, you know, put in a well and then have all the backup systems and everything ready to go. It's going to take time to build that up. And also um, it takes finances to do stuff like that. And we have to prioritize that kind right. of stuff. So where we're gonna put the house, uh, obviously we're gonna have the deep well up there. It's gonna have its main pump. It'll have also have a backup DC pump at, at some point. Uh, it will have a manual hand pump, uh, way to get water out of the well. Uh, eventually we will have a cistern uh, that will gravity feed down to the rest of the property. We will always have that spring as a backup. Um, so yeah, we'll have more. Or a pond. What, I think we might. Yeah, we might we, do a pond as well, yeah. but which would be fed, spring fed, so the water would be pretty decent. And, and we an do emergency. have we do have like uh, creeks around here as, as well. Um, yeah, they're just a little bit harder to get the water. Yeah, they're harder to get to. They're like real d down deep in a crevice. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah, all in the plans and not too far from now. Uh, same with fire protection. Do we have a fire protection plan being out here uh, kind of remote and pretty far away from fire trucks? Uh, yeah, uh, there is there is a fire department up on the mountain here. Uh, it's a little bit far away. It, the, the biggest problem with our location is finding it. Um, I know a while ago we had some neighbors call up an ambulance and um, somebody had called the cops at one time uh, a couple years before we even got here and they just said it took them forever to get here because they couldn't find the location. We're really not on the maps, which right. is a good thing, it's but it's also thing. a bad thing. Um, so yeah. yeah, we will have a fire barrier for the house. We will have the, the water catchment system as a backup and what else, anything else? That was the other reason for uh, the cistern and putting in larger uh, gravity fed lines. Uh, so we have a big tank of water in, in such an emergency. So yeah, uh, because a lot of this is loblolly pine and pine burns really well once once it starts, you know, you gotta have a plan for it. Uh, 
<laughs> do you train for defense, firearms, diversion, escape, etc.? <laughs> <clears throat> How much do we want to talk about that? Mm. Well, I, I have eight years of uh, Tang Sudo karate training, two years of Taekwondo, and two years of Judo Jiu Jitsu. Um, you have. So you're a superhero? No, not at all. I would actually <laughs> say that I am. Having gone through all that, I would say that most of that stuff is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the judo jiu jitsu is actually really good. Judo. Um, yeah, and Aikido, that kind of stuff. I didn't do Aikido, but mm. judo jiu jitsu is really good. The whole forms and Taekwondo and Tang Sudo, that would not be what I'd pick today. Um, funda it teaches you the fundamentals. Yeah, and I think it teaches you confidence too, yeah. as especially being a female. I used to help uh, with teaching women's self-defense classes. I used to help the instructors go in and um, teach you know women's self women's self-defense, and I think that kind of stuff is really good to know. But I really think that the hand-to-hand -hand combat would be much better training. And um, what's the name of the hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat? The uh, Israeli Muay Thai or uh, Krav Maga? Yeah, Krav, Krav Maga. Maga. Uh, that would be one that if I had the opportunity to take, I would take Krav Maga. But I think my understanding of Krav Maga, but not only is it you know, more hand-to-hand -hand combat, it, but it's more mental training. And as somebody that has been uh, in events where I have, I have been physically attacked, I can tell you that there is more of a mental reaction to being attacked then and the physical comes second mm -hmm. um, the very first thing is is are you able to recover from the shock enough to defend yourself right um, I'll tell you a quick story when when I was in my early 20s I was living in an apartment and uh, I had called the plumber the night before to come in and fix something in my something with my tub or something and they can usually show up like really early in the morning and <clears throat> had this not I went to bed heard this you know knock on my door got up looked out the peephole nobody was there I was like did I imagine this I start walking away knock on the door look out the peephole no one's there I'm like what is going on knock again I look out the peephole, no one's there. I take the chain off the lock, and I keep in mind it's early in the morning. Um, I'm in my own pl my own house that I feel my own apartment that I feel comfortable in. I open the door, no one's there. I go to shut the door. Someone comes flying around the corner, grabs me by the throat, shoves me into the house. My very first uh, very first thing is you're in shock. The second thing that I thought of is I had a friend staying over that night, and I yelled for that friend. And uh, the third thing was to start doing self-defense. And but by the time I got out the person's name to get them awake and out there to help me. Um, the person was scared enough and they started um, a bolting. But I will say that really being mentally prepared for situations like that, especially when you are taken off guard, like if you're in the comfort of your own home and you don't expect someone mm -hmm. to come flying around the corner and grab you by the throat, um, you know, that that is where, you know, this kind of That's training where comes the in. The training and the mental conditioning comes yes. in to where it's a muscle memory. Yep. Um, <laughs> Which is completely different. Like, say, I, in another situation, I was in Nepal and I was in the public streets and I was sitting down and I was um, chatting with these two old ladies. And, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm, I have my purse and I'm holding my purse and I'm talking to these two old ladies that are uh, spinning wool. And they kept trying to distract me and getting my hands to help them. And it just didn't feel right. And I, I just felt really uncomfortable, kind of like the hairs on your back of your neck. Uh, that's a situation where I was more aware because I wasn't in my home environment, so I was more conscious of what was happening around me. I look over and this guy is this big, large guy's coming up on me. And I can tell you without a doubt that he was going to try and do a purse, purse grab on mm -hmm. me. Uh, and so, I mean, I got out of that situation very quickly, but that is different conditioning than if you're in your own home. And I think being prepared for both situations like that is something where, you know, karate doesn't necessarily teach you that. Something like Krav Maga would teach you that, but I, you know, I haven't taken it, but I would if I right. had the opportunity. You know, and those are all kind of last resort things. Obviously, we train with firearms and long guns and all those kinds of things, but yeah. we're not obsessed with that kind of stuff, but we like to stay sharp. So, yeah. let's see. Do you guys do any physical training? I'll be honest, I am, I, it takes me a lot to get motivated to do <laughs> any kind of physical uh, um, exercise. I do do physical exercise to answer the we question. We do a lot of work. Yeah, we do a lot of physical work around here, but we have so much going on that it really, it really takes a lot of motivation for me to get out and say, go jogging or something like that. But physical preparation, I think when people are asking this, they're thinking more, uh, um, if you have to bug out and, mm. you know, 
you know, run across country <laughs> for like yeah. 20 days or something like that. I don't know. Um, but I think of physical preparation like that, like, um, you know, exercise, that kind of thing, more along the lines of just being healthy for like old age or for sickness or something like that. And absolutely, mm. that is something that you need to do. And I could do more of it, but You've been doing a lot of jogging lately, or running away from <laughs> <Yeah>. zombies. <laughs> yeah, so so I will say this, that I because it's hard for me to get motivated, um, the one thing that I do use is Zombie Run and Zombie 5K. If you guys haven't checked this out, it's fun, especially if you guys are into prepping or... It, it's an app for your iPhone. Yeah, it's it's a it's an iPhone app where it, it's an interactive app where you... It's the zombie apocalypse. You are Runner 5 for Able Township, and they are playing... It's basically a story is playing in the background and you go on missions to collect items for Able Township and there's this whole story unfolding as you run and zombies will crop up and you'll have to like take off running and it actually will if you turn it on if you choose to use that feature you can turn on GPS and if you don't run fast enough the zombies will get you and you have to restart the chapter all over again <laughs> um, the zombie 5k is like the training for the zombie run once you get to the zombie run then that's where the chapter restarts but the 5k is like more for beginners and so stuff. it helps you like when you start if you're just starting out you can walk and then as you get to a part in the story and zombies start coming after you you have to start running you have to pick up your pace and it tracks oh. you if you're picking up your pace or not not for the 5k but for the zombie run That's part funny. and if you don't you have to start the chapter all over again but for me i get really bored just going out like running at the same path all the time so for me um i'm listening to the story before i know it i'm back home and i want to go do it again because i want to hear the next chapter and what happens yeah check out that zombie I'll, yeah, I'll leave a link in the description if anyone wants to try, check it out, but definitely it's a, it's a cool app, especially this time of year with Halloween coming up. <laughs> okay, next question. How about communications without cell phones? What about ham radio and how to get news? <clears throat> And we have um, we have an uh, emergency radio. Uh, we also have walkie talkies that we talk about. You know, you see us on our videos all the time. Um, again, we're not really prepping for uh, EMPs. We don't keep those in any kind of um, Faraday cage. Yeah, Faraday cage or anything like that. Although our house, I think, might be a Faraday cage with the way it's. It might be. <laughs> with the way Wouldn't it's take up. much more to make it that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, trash can cans and stuff. We read about that stuff. We just don't. We don't yeah. actively prepare for that kind of thing. Um, as far as ham radios, I've always actually wanted to do ham radio. Um, yeah. I guess they changed the rules a long time ago. You had to know Morse code, and I try learning Morse code for it. Today, you don't have to know Morse code. I still would like to learn Morse code. I don't know it. Um, but um, yeah, I, that'd be fun to do. I don't see me being a ham radio operator because I don't like to talk on the phone. I don't. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't stand talking. <laughs> To, uh, I'm not a very I'm not a very social person, so yeah. text. Do they have ham text? Ham text. No, I think that's kind of like Morse code. Maybe they do. I think you may, probably can do data over ham radio frequencies. I think I read that. But yeah, that's something that we're interested in doing at some point. Maybe yeah. When um, things slow down, it would be yeah. fun to get a license just to have it. But it'd be cool. Uh, let's see. Do you barter with locals? Mm -hmm. All the time. Yeah, we do. Um, that's not something that we did when we were in suburbia. People didn't even talk to each other in suburbia, but yeah. up here. Up here, you kind of handle, take care of each other and, mm -hmm. you know, trade vegetables for this or meat for that or whatever, you, you know. It's yeah. not a conscious thing. Like Yeah, you just everybody helps each other. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, if we had to, you know, if we have a bunch of eggs and we don't have anything to do with them, we give them to the neighbors and... They yeah. have something, they'll give it to us. They have something, they'll give it to us. It's just, it's cool. It's a really, yeah. really old school, family oriented, community type stuff. And, and it's such a nice change from where we came from. Okay, next question. Uh, you guys have a one year prepper pantry, but what happens if there's a prolonged event that goes beyond a year? What do you do? Yeah, so. The prepper pantry is to cover you, cover you for one year, and, and for us, we just determined one year was a was a good amount for us based off of um, that's about how long it takes to get a job. Whenever you know, we had a job loss situation and we needed to rely on that that pantry, um, but any events that go beyond a year, that's where homesteading comes into play. So you're talking uh, meat on the hoof and food in the fields, and uh, that's that's really why we're we're doing what we're doing here like to me homesteading is prepper extreme because mm -hmm. you are actually producing your own food at that point right. um 
we do have uh, a bunch of videos out there on how to start a three-week pantry and, and we, we do cover how about our one-year pantry how to use mylar bags that kind of thing if anybody's interested i'll leave those down below yep what are your thoughts on alternate alternate currency such as gold silver or bitcoin we differ in this you and i do we <clears throat> i think so huh. i know he, he was talking about the gold and silver thing and getting into it i am adamantly against it i mean i just think of it big picture is gold can you eat gold no can you drink gold no so if i'm going to invest my money into something that's going to have a return on it it's going to be in water and in food and setting up my homestead it's not going to be in metal well, and my thought is that currency represents value in whatever form it is. If, if it's a dollar, which is a fiat made up currency, it doesn't really represent a value if everyone decides it doesn't represent value. But everyone has used gold as a backup form of value for a very long time, so I think it would make sense to own a little bit of gold and silver um, because you know, say you have your food and your water and everything all handled. Um, if you're trading labor for value and the dollar isn't worth anything, can you buy whatever you may need to buy? Can someone cash in a gold can, coin? Can Are someone, they going to give you change? <laughs> well, I don't know, but yeah, I mean, it just seems... Well, Bitcoin, I'm not really sold on, um, but I think gold has value. Um, I think gold has more value than actual dollars, but it all depends on whether the world decides that gold is valuable or not, yeah, or so the dollar is valuable or not. Two different perspectives. Yeah. I prefer to invest my what resources I have into physical, edible, drinkable <laughs> as as resources. And she prefers to invest in things like chocolate. Yes, chocolate. <laughs> Hi, chicken. Uh, are you prepared to defend your home against intruders? There's a lot of these kinds of questions. Yeah, I think people are thinking like, again, uh, the end of the world as we know it situation. Uh, people are going to come take your food cash. I've talked a bit this, about this ad nauseum, uh, especially if you are in a suburban situation. If you have a food cash, um, and everyone knows about it. Even if you don't have a food cache and no one knows about it, it, the very first thing, you're going to have a horde from the cities coming and attacking your home. Are you going to be able to defend that? No, you're not going to be able to defend that. Two people aren't. Uh, 20 people aren't. 50 people aren't. You have seen like castles and how those work with sieges that it's not going to work. You're not going to be able to defend it. Uh, Someone wants your stuff, they'll come take it. They're going to come take it. Take it. Um, your best defense, if that is your thing, is to protect it, you know, against uh, hordes of people, is to hide it in multiple locations. Yep. And but as far as people <clears throat> defending our home, absolutely. I mean, you've seen our security videos. We've talked about, you know, um, firearms and I don't know if we want to cover this. There's or not a lot we can talk about really on YouTube, Disney Channel, YouTube, advertiser friendly stuff, but I would like to do those kinds of videos, but I wouldn't put them on this platform because we don't sugarcoat stuff like that. So I do want to add something onto this too, because not too long ago we were watching Boss of the Swamp and he said where a couple YouTubers had just randomly like stopped by his house, a couple yeah. of them in the same day. They were looking at the posted signs. They saw his name on the posted signs or something like that. And he had like two people in the same day, like just like, hey, I saw you on YouTube, just wanted to swing by. That is not okay. Yeah, that's not cool. Ever. Um, if you ever wanted to go stop by a YouTuber's house or something, you send them an email, you say, can I come by your house? And they are going to say yes or no. And if you don't feel comfortable enough to email them to ask them that, then it is absolutely not okay to just swing by their house. Yeah. And you're not going to be well received even if you show up with a box of cookies right. or chocolate. Right, yeah, that's, 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 a, not that's okay. a no, no. Uh, let's see, do you currently rely on anyone else for your own survival? Yes. And I believe that we always, always will. Um, anybody that says that they absolutely are completely 100% self-sufficient is full of crap. Exactly. Um, you, we, we rely on each other. Yeah, we rely on each other. But you're always going to have something that you're going to need or something that you're going to run out of that you're going to need. And, um, it, it, and again, anybody that wants to dispute that can just look back on history. There is no one-man band 
to anything you unless you're living in complete and total poverty with animal skins and even still you might need to go get something everyone um, needs supplies at one point or yeah. another the but the idea here is to try and reduce the amount of outside resources that we need as much as possible and that is our goal over the next 5 10 50 years right good question though how do you prepare for an unforeseen medical event <clears throat> this is probably the biggest thing that i would say we are not prepared for. We do have medical supplies. We do have a little bit of training when it comes to something like a, a deep wound or um, if we have you know, like with a splint and broken bone. Yeah, or something, something like that. Uh, we have enough to get to a medical uh, facility. Um, as far as old age, when you know a lot of people would ask this, and we're building our house, we're building all of the main components on the first floor. Uh, we will have our pantry in the basement. We also have a pantry on the main floor, a washer and dryer. Uh, the main bedroom is going to be. The master bedroom is going to be on the main floor bathroom all that kind of stuff you know in the case of something like um, uh, old age or broken hips or or something where we aren't able to go up and down the stairs um, we are planning for things like this but as far as you know if somebody ends up getting uh, you know you get out of getting cancer or, or uh, some sort of uh, physical disability or something like that I don't think you really ever are truly prepared for something like that and you just end up having to deal with it as best yeah. you can yeah Final question. How confident are you with your current level of preparedness? I am more confident than I would say, I want to, well, I, I can't give you a percentage of people, but I would say probably 80% of most people, most people out there. Yeah. Um, but I see a long path ahead of us, you know, with as, as far as from a self-sufficiency point of view, I and mean, we've got a long, 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 long way to go. And we're not in a rush to do it just because we want to do it right. Hi, chicken. <laughs> yeah, that last 20% of being prepared is, is the hardest, I yeah. think. But those are all the questions I have. Uh, if you guys have been watching and chatting with us on, on the Super Chat thing or whatever, uh, it was cool having you here. It was fun to try, and that was our first foray into it. Um, I would say if you guys are not currently prepping, uh, the, the term prepper really does have a bad connotation or a bad stigma to it just because of all of the extremists that are out there but I, I don't want you to think of it as a dirty word it <laughs> our country is very very ill prepared compared to other countries for any kind of natural disaster and and it's these people that are you know scared of the word prepper or scared of becoming known as the you know known as a prepper or scared of preparing for being a prepper or just you know turned off by the term altogether that end up um going through a situation um, like a hurricane disaster yeah. every time you see a hurricane go through you say you see the, the people at FEMA going this country is not prepared for this kind of stuff we just don't live that type of, we don't have that type of culture yeah and you see the people that just were like we weren't prepared we didn't have generator we didn't have food we there, where's FEMA where's the government they're not showing up we expected them to be here by now they're not here there's no food there's no water we don't know what to do you can do that right now start getting ready for that stuff now um, yeah. And it, there's nothing wrong with it. That's not a dirty word. It's yeah. So when we talk about prepping, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, that's about it. That's all I have. That's all I have. All right. Well, hopefully it's been helpful to you guys. Uh, we will catch you in the next video. Thanks yeah. for watching. Don't and know what out the topic us. will be yet, but uh, oh yeah. Leave your comments down below. If you guys have any questions or anything like that uh, that you want us to address in a future video, we're going to theme these every week, every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Don't know what the topic's going to be next week, but leave all your questions. We'll collect them and save them whenever that theme comes up. And uh, catch you the next one. Cheers.